Thank you for the invitation to come to your university. It's very important that not only am I here to share about our culture, but to also to provide an education. So I want to thank you for this opportunity. We thank you. We are deeply honored, most honored that you are here, Mr. Vernon Foster. and. Um, the fact that we are here under the patronage of uh, Spiro Hyatt University, the Faculty of Psychology, mm. I think your message uh, it is in the right place uh, because even the, the psychologists, we've talked uh, this uh, uh, before the, our uh, broadcast, uh, need very much of your message. Let me say just a few words about, no. about you. Uh, you are a full blood. Klamath Modok and Yahoo Skin in India. Yes. Uh, you are a worldwide spokesman on behalf of the native Indians, American Indians. Mm -hmm. You were deeply involved since 1968 as an activist in the movement for the American Indian rights. You were sitting in many boards, you are organizing programs such as uh, Buffalo Heart or Red Road Journey. Mm -hmm. You are uh, uh, a keeper of the wisdom, a wisdom keeper, uh, one of the few wisdom keepers. And you are conducting, conducting a sacred ceremony such as Sweat Lodge, su such as uh, um, sacred, you are the keeper of the sacred pipe, Chanumpa. You are a sun dancer, uh, and uh, I feel your, in your presence uh, something, uh, emotions, which I cannot put in words. And I want to thank you. It's a gift that you're giving to me today and to our viewers. Mm. And uh, to, to start, how does it look today's uh, Native American people? Well, you know, I think as we begin to understand the Native American people, we must also understand not only good things, but the hardships that Indian people have faced throughout time. Because today, the Native American culture is becoming a big influence around the world. Mm -hmm. There isn't a place that I can travel that doesn't have some sort of Native American influence, whether it's Native American craft work, whether it's people learning songs, and even emanating ceremonies. So I think the importance of our message today is to show people the, the real Native people. What people see in other countries is an image that has uh, nurtured the stereotype of Indian people. We have always been looked at as a very stoic people, mm -hmm. the Vinitus, mm -hmm. if you will. Vin you know. And we are not. We are people that are human beings and we have feelings and emotions. So later on I want to discuss a little bit about that. But to begin to recognize or to even begin to understand Native American people we have to first be educated a little bit about Indian people. Mm -hmm. I love your country because I see many similarities in your country as well as the Native American communities. I came to Europe with the idea and the thought of conquering Europe. Conquering Europeans Europe. came to America and they conquered America. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to uh, conquer Europe. And as I started to travel throughout the European countries, I began to see that 
what we perceive as European people in the United States it is also the cliche. not yes uh -huh. is not what I am seeing in other mm -hmm. countries mm -hmm. I see other countries having dances mm -hmm. having a culture mm -hmm. but in America American people don't have that culture mm -hmm. but for the educational thought and the aspect is Indian people we have not always been free to practice our songs to practice our ceremonies to speak our language to pass our stories down and this was taken away from our Indian people this law was heavily enforced. Men, even women, sometimes would go to prison for having an open ceremony or having an opening gathering. This law, unfortunately, did not change until 1977, just a few years ago. So my comparison to the people of Romania, I see a very sincere desire in need for a spiritual foundation which our people have always maintained regardless of what we may have faced in in our lifetime and the freedom that we have today is not always the freedom that we that was taken from us Romanian people are just now starting to experience freedom and just like our culture, we haven't completely grasped the concept, mm -hmm. the ability of movement around that freedom. Mm -hmm. So as Indian people, because we were not allowed to practice our ways or have our ceremonies, many of it got placed on a shelf. Some of it even forgotten about. Well, today, we are in the process of what I call redefining our culture, mm -hmm. rediscovering mm -hmm. who we are as a people, rediscovering what freedom is, rediscovering our languages, our culture, our dances, our ceremonies. So that's a comparison that it's very important for me to convey because out of all the countries that I've visited throughout the world, I find the Romanian people mm -hmm. more sincere mm -hmm. in trying to find a spiritual foundation in which to base their life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I love that. I, I really feel that. Mm -hmm. Well, Indian people in America today, there are 2.3 million Indian people the in the United million. States. Prior to anyone coming to our continent, mm -hmm. there was an estimated of 132 million Indian people from west coast to east coast, from the south to the north. In the 1700s, our numbers went down from 132 million native people to 17 or um, 700,000. Native Americans. Today we are 2.5 million and so as time progresses our numbers are starting to build once again and it's important that in rebuilding our culture that we grasp and begin to build our culture on the foundation of spirituality. For Indian people, spirituality was not a religious concept. Mm -hmm. People take spirituality and they begin to put labels on it, if you will, mm -hmm. and dogma. Mm -hmm. Our culture was not a dogma. Our spirituality mm -hmm. was a way of life. It was a natural way of life. And it was a habitual way of life. So our spirituality became a habit. Mm -hmm that became compatible to our way of life. Mm -hmm. So giving thanks for the water that we drink, giving thanks for all things that we have, was natural. We didn't separate our spirituality from the way we lived. So the message mm -hmm. that I 
try to convey is that short message of uh, de-education. Mm -hmm. Even the term Indian. People believe that Columbus gave us that term Indian in 1492 when we found him on the shores of our continent. Well, the reality of it is, in 1492, India did not exist with the term India or West Indies. Mm -hmm. It was a continent known as Hindustan. We were referred to as a people that were in Dios, Spanish, with God. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at this today and we begin to put it all together, then we discover the Indian people is not a people. Indian is a way of life. In Dios, a life with God. And as we move into the 21st century, we also begin to recognize that before Christianity, because Christianity was a tool of oppression, that was used against our people. Not saying Christianity is bad because Indian people, we were Christians before, before we knew what Christianity was. And as we move along into modern society, we start to begin to see people taking a holistic approach to mental health. Mm -hmm. The field of psychology. We were psychologists before we knew what the term psychology was. So everything in modern society is things that have been practicing not only by my people, but they were practiced by your people too. Because your people, like many other indigenous cultures around the world, we were intuitive thinkers and doers. We did things from the feeling of our heart. But as time progressed, we became intellectual thinkers. And so we empowered our intellect. By, by the time we started putting our children into schools, and we began to educate ourselves, we began to empower our intellect. Because we want our children to become very intelligent. We want them to become presidents. We want them to become great achievers in society but we've left our intuitiveness behind. And so the influence that Indian people uh, have in the world today is many people are looking for a holistic approach to life. And that holistic approach, it's an intuitive approach. It's a heartfelt approach. Yeah. We, we very much need the uh, message, your native message, your heart message, because we lost our capacity to, to feel even this moment as sacred. I, I'm, I feel joy in myself because I feel peace and I feel the, the environment that you personalized since you are here. Mm -hmm. And I look at this glass of water as sacred and I thank you. Yes, and I think it's beginning to learn to what I call see beyond seeing. Seeing things for more than what they are. See, we have two sets of eyes. And I always say, the only reason the Creator gave me eyes was so that I wouldn't bump into things or fall down the stairs. Hmm. You begin to see with the eyes of the heart then you're able to see beyond seeing. For an example, it's like this table. We look at it from the intellectual world and you ask me, what do you see? And I will tell you, I see a table. That is my intellectual perception of what I see. But if I look at this table with my heart, then I see the tree that used to stand out there comes from the natural world. We never lose that connection. No matter what it has become, we do not lose that connection. And that's even 
goes for us human beings. No matter what we become, we can't lose the connection of who we are or what we are. We are part of that creation. We are like that tree. Perhaps someday, maybe somebody's going to make a coffee table out of us. Mm. Beautiful mm. images and metaphors. So we, we have to reconnect. Yes, yes. And reconnecting means to accept. See, that's the hardest thing for man today is to accept. And you can only have faith, which our culture was based on faith. You can only have faith through acceptance. Now the beautiful part about native people is we went through what I consider an American Holocaust. Mm -hmm. We suffered a great deal. Many lives were lost. So in that process, are we angry about that? There was a time we was angry. That's why the movement was started. We were angered the way we we're, were being treated the way we were being looked at, the way people perceived us, didn't allow us to show who we really were. Mm -hmm. And so we were angry about that. Mm -hmm. But as time progressed, we began to educate people. Mm -hmm. Because through education, that's what knocks down the barriers mm -hmm. of people. And so, when we begin to educate ourselves about Native people, then we begin to understand why our societies were free from diseases. Mm -hmm. Not just physical diseases that affect the body, but diseases of the mind. Mm -hmm. And that acceptance is understanding that the possibility, the possibility of anything occurring to us human beings, that possibility has and always will be there. Mm -hmm. But if we let it go and forget all about it and take it for granted, mm -hmm. when something happens to us, it takes us by surprise. Mm -hmm. And when something takes us by surprise, we act irrational to it. But if we know the possibility exists when something occurs, we don't allow it take us by surprise. Mm -hmm. We can act rational to it. So the anger was there. We're beyond that anger because I like to consider Indian people, we had the last laugh. And what I mean by that is, no matter what we have gone through, and when our ways were being denied, we have come full circle. Because today, everybody wants to be an Indian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whatever we went through in the past, we don't know why we had to go through that, mm -hmm. but we have accepted it. And the reward is paying off today because we see that everybody wants to be like us Indians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that through this educational process, that as we teach ourselves about our culture, we're able to teach others about our culture. So at the same time, I am teaching you and other people about who Indian people are, our children are being taught the very thing that I'm speaking of today. Mm -hmm. So we are all learning together mm -hmm. so that perhaps we can move into what many of our great chiefs said, mending that sacred hoop. Mm -hmm. See? So when we begin to look at what I just said, mm -hmm. that's psychology. Accepting. Mm -hmm. And when you accept See, that is what made our medicine men 
and our medicine women successful in life was because we had faith in their healing because they had faith in the Creator. Today we've lost that faith. You know if you go and say your grandmother gets sick and you go to your minister and you say can you go to the hospital and pray for my grandma? If somebody asked me that I would say I will go with you and I will pray with you for your grandma. Why did you ask me? Do you not have your own faith? You know, so when we begin to look at this, all it is is empowering, empowering ourselves once again. And to empower ourselves is to begin to learn everything about ourselves. You know, shamanism, <laughs> it's a term that I have trouble letting come out on my lips because it's like many other things. When we talk about connection, when we use something so much, we begin to lose connection. You know, when I do workshops, I surprise people many times because they expect me to come out in all my Indian clothes to do these dances and to sing these songs and do some magic and hocus pocus. And they're surprised when they see me sitting there with my jeans and maybe a choker and, and dress contemporary. And as I begin to do my workshops, it has very little Native American connection, meaning the, the, uh, the dancing and singing. I very seldom sing songs in my workshops because all I am there to do is to empower people to find their own healing, which is already inside of them. You know, it's like one time I was invited to New York to a drumming circle. So I dressed up all in my Indian clothes and people were all excited. They said, we're going to have an Indian come and he's going to lead our drumming circle. And so I'm sitting there with my Indian clothes and I begin to lead people through meditation. I told them, close your eyes, relax, imagine this beautiful thing. And I begin to sing. But I didn't sing Native American songs. I started singing an India mantra. <laughs> People's eyes opened up and it took them by surprise. But the whole point of the thing was that all cultures are beautiful and as native people we feel it important to maintain the dignity of who we are as a people maintain the dignity of our ceremonies and our culture so as I travel the world I believe that I am on a, a mission and this mission is to do two things. One is to educate people about our culture, who we are and what we are. The other one is to teach spirituality, not in the sense of new age philosophy or concept, but to help maintain the dignity of our ceremonies because people are losing connection and as I see people emanating our culture I see them mixing mm -hmm. spirituality in many different forms many people learn a little bit about the Native American culture so they put that in the bowl and then they learn mantras and they put that in the bowl they learn Buddhism, they put that in the bowl. Many people are learning about ayahuasca, so they put that in the bowl. 
peyote, and they're mixing all these medicines. To me, all these medicines, they're like a beautiful color of paint. So each one comes with its own color. And when you add all those colors together, you're only going to get one color. That's dark, that's black, that's sickness. Mm -hmm. So as I travel around the world, I do not hold back to accommodate anybody's concept. I don't hold back from the teachings that need to be taught. People need to hear the devastation of what Indian people went through because it was only through that devastation that we have survived through our spirituality. So we take it very important. And as we see that loss of connection, you know, an exercise that you can do, anybody can do, say your name out loud 50 times and begin to say your name, you begin to lose connection. It doesn't sound like your name anymore. It sounds like you're making just a sound. That's how quickly we can lose connection. And we lose connection through using things so much. See, the Indian people believe be careful what you say because words have power. But also be careful how you say it because you can hurt somebody or you can heal somebody with your words. Take it a step further. Be careful what you think because there's power in thought. And so these are the teachings that are so important. These are the teachings that led our people. We have a value system. We have a Native American value system. And in that value system, first of all, is sharing. That's what got us in trouble with Columbus. <laughs> we shared too much. <laughs> but sharing is one of our values. Humility. To be able to face humility. A warrior, people perceive a warrior, the Vinny II concept, the stoic Indian. Huh? Mm -hmm. The Indian that goes out into battle, defeats his enemy. To us, a warrior is willing to take an old man or an old lady and put them in their arms and carry them across the river or a small child. A warrior is willing to stay behind in battle to protect the woman or a child. A warrior is willing to crawl on his belly like a worm and to fly like an eagle. But if you fly too high and you stay in the sky, you're going to go out of balance. And if you crawl on your worm and stay on the ground, you're going to go out of balance. So you come back to the center. And that's that center of balance. So humility is a great value to our Indian people. Because there are times we have to crawl on our belly and cry with the people. And there are times we have to pick them up and fly and make them feel good. I often say, if you fly like an eagle, don't fly too high because you're going to lose some feathers and you're no longer going to be an eagle. You're going to lose some letters and it's going to become an eagle. You know, those are the kinds of teachings mm -hmm. that need to be taught because we 
are in a devastating time. We are in the time, like the old people have said, we are in the time of prophecy. And what's so beautiful is that the seventh generation, your generation, the people today, our children, the seventh generation is not only witnessing prophecy, but you can begin to feel proud in the fact that you are assisting in that prophecy. It's a big picture. And in this time of change, we have the opportunity to do life all over again, but do it in a different way. And many people like yourself and like others that are practicing, uh, their spirituality, they begin the healing process because it begins within ourself. The earth, it's going to take care of itself. It has for millions and millions of years, but we haven't taken care of ourselves. When we start to take care of ourselves again, then we can begin to take care of the earth. Because taking care of ourselves means to reawaken our consciousness. Yeah. I, 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 was, well, I was wondering what can be done, the first thing to be done to, to begin to reconnect with ourselves. First of all, not to deny ourselves. Not to deny that we are a human being. Not to deny our emotions and our feelings because they are a part of us. If we were not meant to have feelings, we wouldn't have these little cry thingies in our eyes to make us cry. We wouldn't weep when our loved ones were placed in the ground. We were meant to have feelings and emotions. See, feelings and emotions they come from the natural world. And many times when we have feelings and emotions and we cross them over into our world, the intellectual world, we change them. Many people go through life trying to push away their feelings. Trying to separate themselves from their feelings. And when you do that, you begin to make enemies, enemies of fear. You make enemies of depression. You make an enemy out of sadness. Because we try to push something away from us that is attached to us. I always tell people, don't make enemies of your feelings, but make friends, make allies with your feelings. Because like everything else we see, it works in balance. Because on every feeling, there is another feeling attached to it. But oftentimes we don't get to see it because we push it away. Fear. It's like fear. When people are faced with fear, they stop. The fear has no power. Only the power in which we give it, feed it. That if they are able to walk through that fear and to be able to see it from the other side, then they see the courage that they're seeking. Mm -hmm. It's like good and bad. Indian people, in our concept of the good and bad, it's like a scale. It's like a two-sided scale. Mm -hmm. If you take a stone and you place it on this side of the scale, obviously it's going to tip out of balance. You take another stone and place it on this side, there's going to be a struggle before they become compatible. And compatibility only means working together. Many people, they walk away during that struggle so they don't get to experience that balance. But it exists. It is there. As a native person, I look at the good and I look at the bad 
but I choose not to be part of either one. I let the good exist and I let the bad exist. But I choose not to be part of either one. I stay in the center and that center is the center of reasoning. Because in good there is bad and in bad there is good. The good and bad are the lessons that we should see, that we should learn. The bad and good is the extreme. Mm -hmm. Many people find the spiritual path and they go out of balance because they go to the extreme of it. They feel that once they find that spiritual path, they have to become holy 24 hours a day. You try to be holy 24 hours a day, you don't allow yourself to be a human being because you don't allow yourself to make mistakes and to experience and feel and learn from those mistakes. If you're walking across the field and you slip and you fall down, many people will say, ah, I was thinking bad things. Or they will say, ah, the Creator is trying to teach me a lesson. And I say, you just wasn't watching where you were going. You stumbled and you fell. Mm -hmm. There is no lesson in that. Mm -hmm. You're a human being. Mm -hmm. And so begin to understand our feelings and emotions. To get back to your question, one must learn everything. Everything about himself. Now, when I hear that word shaman, I see many people trying to practice what I would call the physical attributes mm -hmm. of our culture. Mm -hmm. Even for our Indian people, many people call them Charles traditional people mm -hmm. because they dance, they sing, they tell stories, they know the legends, they know the ceremonies, but those are only physical attributes that make up our culture. What makes a traditional person is living by the value system. And this is what goes for every man, woman and child on this earth, is to rediscover that value system and live by it. And many people are taking a shortcut and jumping ahead and seeking to be a shaman. But a shaman, if you will, I, I don't like that term, our medicine people, they know every little thing that makes up us human beings. All the way from our physical being, the physical sicknesses in our bodies, all the way to the mental health state of our mind, in our heart. See, as we begin to delve into, if you will, the realm of psychology, for many years, even today, psychology has been a field for the mind. Started when Freud started talking about dreams and dream concepts, and we moved the field of psychology into becoming a mind field concept. Mm -hmm. Whereas today, psychologists are beginning to accept a holistic approach to the mental health of human beings. And accepting that holistic approach only means that they're moving away from being mind-filled uh, therapists mm -hmm. to becoming heartfelt therapists because the heart is where our actions begin from. And we often, we don't act with our heart. The actions, the thoughts, it comes from the heart. But our perception comes from the mind. See, 
Right. It goes back to acceptance. When we're talking mm -hmm. about acceptance. Thank you. Thank you. To accept whatever happens, no matter how big or how small of an event that happens to us human beings, the possibility of it happening has and always will be there. Mm -hmm. Acceptance within ourselves to accept. I have a very humorous personality to accept that I'm not humorous all the time. I get very angry to accept I get depressed and I want to cry and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But that is me. I may not like it at the time, but I love that side of me. Mm -hmm. You know, and now, kind of, to touch on the male aspect of it, because in our culture, we do not have dominance over a male or female. Mm -hmm. Men and women, children, animals, plants, are all equal. So, the term domination does not exist in our culture. Everybody had their role in life and it was recognized and it was accepted. The woman, she's the backbone of our cultures. She's the backbone of our leaderships. Even the presidents. I can bet a lifetime's of savings that many of the words that are projected publicly come from his wife in their quiet moments. The woman is the backbone. She may have her role in life, and a man may have his role in life, but one is not greater than the other. I, myself, I consider myself a very manly man. But I recognize and I accept the female side of me. If you call me a woman, I would probably knock you out of your chair. But I accept the female side of me and it doesn't take away my masculinity. See, when we begin to accept ourselves, we have to accept the good things about ourselves and the bad things about ourselves the good experiences we've had in life and the bad experiences we've had in life. Not to say to allow any of those things to dominate or to run our life, but to accept. Because the possibility of it happening has and always will be there. Mm -hmm. See, if I tell you that the possibility of the roof that we're sitting under could fall in on our heads at any moment. We don't want it to happen and we hope it doesn't happen but the possibility exists. And now that you know that if we begin to hear the roof crack we can act accordingly. Then we can tell the cameraman just go to the door. We can tell the people in the studio Go to the door and let's go. But if we forget about it, and it starts to happen, we begin to panic. First thing we think of, do we save the equipment? Do we do, what do we do, what do we do? Do I grab my purse? Do we grab this? And we, and we start to panic. Because we act irrational to it. So the concept behind Indian people is that acceptance. See, life, very simple but we make it very complicated because if we do not have acceptance then we have its bad brother of logic and we look for the logical reasons why did this happen to me instead of accepting what happened to me because when we look for logic we ask many questions and when we ask those questions sometimes we chip away 
it what should be faith. I have to accept that I remain speechless listening to you and I almost have no question. You, you, your, 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 your story, your, your life story are, are the core of the psychology. The acceptance, the, uh, the, uh, the need of reconnection with our souls, the sacredness of all our moments, it is beautiful, uh, Vernon, and I, uh, I just want to listen to you. Mm. And, I, and I love that you use the term beautiful, mm -hmm. because life is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And just like I end my circles, you know, I always tell people, out of all the songs, out of all the words, out of all the teachings that you hear from me, it's a lot. And what you remember, that's not important to me. Mm -hmm. But what is important is that you remember that you are a beautiful spirit. Mm -hmm. See, those are empowering words. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to have reminders. So if you forget you're a beautiful spirit, go home and write it on your bathroom mm -hmm. mirror. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you see that beautiful spirit looking at yourself. Yes, and you are mirroring me, me as a beautiful spirit, and I, I feel this. Thank well, you. that's nice to hear. But I'm not always a beautiful spirit, mm. because I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that I move away from it, that I become very treacherous and very deceitful but what that means is is that I allow myself to feel anger and to experience mm -hmm. this is beautiful the, even this is this is the real beauty you know depression is plaguing people today mm -hmm. and the way I tell people to deal with depression first of all we have to learn to take charge of our feelings and our emotions. We've allowed these feelings, these emotions, to take charge of us. So if I become depressed, my depression is going to tell me, isolate myself. My depression is going to tell me to sit in a room and cry. My depression is going to tell me, buy black clothes and sit and feel bad. Well, I like to treat depression like an unwanted guest. Mm -hmm. We have guests that come into our homes and we can't wait for them to leave. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to be inhospitable to them, so we offer them a mm -hmm. cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And when their coffee is finished, we say, well, you're going to have to leave now because I have happiness coming over in a half hour and I have to get ready. That's taking charge. Mm -hmm. Be depressed. Allow yourself to feel it and experience it, mm -hmm. but put a time limit on it. Mm -hmm. When you're finished with it, tell it it's time to go. Mm -hmm. You know, and part of that, we have to stop labeling each other. And we have to stop labeling mm -hmm. sicknesses. Mm -hmm. because we build our life around labels. Mm -hmm. If you go to a physician and he tells you ha you have cancer, you start building your life around that cancer. Mm -hmm. And you stop running. Mm -hmm. Even though you may not need to stop running, you stop running. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, I don't have the energy anymore because I have cancer. And we start to empower that, mm -hmm. that sickness. So in that same way, we empower our feelings and our emotions. And so we have to stop utilizing words. Like, I do not like the word failure. Many people come to me and they ask me, what can I do about accomplishments? Because I failed this and I say, wait a minute, you did not fail. Mm -hmm. If you use the word failure, mm -hmm. there's many other words attached to that. Mm -hmm. Not good enough. 
low self-esteem, mm -hmm. not intelligent enough. Mm -hmm. And we have all these connections. Mm -hmm. So I say, mm -hmm. you did not fail. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't your time. Mm -hmm. See, that leaves the door open to try again. Mm -hmm. Because if you call yourself a failure, then you put yourself in a mindset, I'm not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. And you push your way from it, push yourself away from it. Mm -hmm. But if you say, it just wasn't my time, that leaves the door open to try it again without animosity. Mm -hmm. you know? It wasn't my time. And I see that we, about time we have only five minutes. Yeah. Yes, about, yeah. it is our time. Yeah. So I, I would, would like to ask you to, to, to finish in your way our our 16 minutes okay. our show so first of all i want to thank you once again mm -hmm. for allowing me to be here because i believe that utilizing platforms in a media form is not only the way of the future mm -hmm. but i like to call it a high tech attack mm -hmm. and what i mean by that is education is the tool today mm -hmm. and the only way we're going to educate people is through this tool of weaponry mm -hmm. years ago it was the bow it was the arrow it was counting coup today our weapons is technology mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i want to thank you allowing me to to go into battle on on the spiritual field I thank you. Oh. It was an honor for, for me and for our institution. No. I'd like you to join with me in, in offering a few words of thanks. Because there is not a moment in the day that goes by that we don't have something to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. Even if it's taking five steps, I'm thankful I didn't sprain my ankle in those five steps. Mm -hmm. Creator, I want to thank you for allowing us to be here today, to open this door that we may share not only our culture of who we are as a people, but that we may come together just like the great chiefs, Crazy Horse. He said that someday in this sick world, all people of all colors will come together and to help mend the sacred hoop of life. Creator, we ask that you protect this young man and his family and protect those that are working in this studio and to touch the eyes so that they can see what needs to be seen, the ears so they can hear what needs to be heard in the mouth so that they can speak what needs to be spoken. Creator, thank you for giving us, our people, these ways of teaching, these ways of learning, and the opportunity to pass these words, to pass these teachings on to the world. Forgive me if I have forgotten anything, but thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the ability to be able to speak today at this university. Aho. Oh.